This episode is brought to you by Imagine Strength, your go-to for safe, simple, and effective high-intensity training equipment. Growing a successful high-intensity training business requires workout equipment that's not only high quality, but also intelligently designed to fit the unique needs of your studio. And that's where Imagine Strength comes in. Drawing on the wisdom of the legendary Arthur Jones, Imagine Strength has crafted a groundbreaking line of fitness equipment that's as affordable as it is efficient, giving your studio the upgrade it needs without breaking the bank. The team at Imagine Strength breathes hit. Their passion for high intensity training shines through in their designs, which they've consistently refined and innovated for optimum effectiveness and user experience. From my personal experience at REC, I can attest to the careful consideration and craftsmanship that goes into every single piece. My Imagine Strength workout was absolutely brutal, in a good way, of course. Now, what makes Imagine Strength truly stand out? They have innovative equipment tailored for the unique needs of HIT studios, affordable and efficient designs, lowering the barriers to entry for a HIT business, continuous innovation and refinement, ensuring your studio stays ahead of the curve. Founder Jeff Turner and his team are dedicated to moving the HIT industry forward and making strength training accessible to more people than ever before. Here's how you get started. Number one, visit imaginestrength.com. Number two, discuss your specific needs with the team. And number three, select the equipment that will propel your business to the next level. Head to imaginestrength.com today and give your HIT business the Imagine Strength edge. Be part of the HIT revolution and see firsthand how their unique equipment can transform your studio's workout experience. Elevate your HIT business with Imagine Strength. Lauren Snell here and welcome back to High Intensity Business, your one-stop shop for elevating your hit business and fueling, fueling your passion for high intensity training. Before we dive into today's episode, grab your free PDF guide on how to turn your hit business into a robust referral machine. You can download that now over at highintensitybusiness.com forward slash ref, that's R-E-F. You'll also get a full-length video training with Luke Carlson, CEO of Discover Strength on how to build a referral machine and get access to lots of free resources, including hit business guides, checklists, and so much more. Just go to highintensitybusiness.com forward slash ref to download that now. Today, we are talking about Pete's referral program, the referral program that doubled Pete's circles business to 10K a week. This is episode 421. Obviously, I'm welcoming back Pete to the podcast. Pete is a master high intensity fitness coach and creator of the 90 Second Fitness Solution. He's been freshly coaching since 1985 and is also a five-time best-selling author. Um, we'll leave it there on the bio because you know he's already been on enough. People know who he is. Uh, Pete, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you, Lawrence. Great to be back. Great to be with you. So excited about this one. We're going to talk about how you grew your business rapidly and very effectively using a referral program. Tell us about that. What is that about? It's, it's, uh, it was great. It, it came, uh, came about by accident. Uh, my high intensity business was doing well. I was probably hitting the $5,000 a week mark at this point. Uh, I grew it from, I don't know, 40 sessions to 60 sessions a week. So it, it was good. It was a good business. I wanted to see how far it can go. I wanted to take it to the next level. Uh, my, I tried different marketing approaches. I tried, uh, in New York City, magazine ads. Um, you don't, you know, when you reach out to the public with something unique, it's really difficult. You don't know what you're going to get client wise. You, you may get, um, you know, just just not the best people. They don't know you. You don't know them, so it doesn't work out well. So I abandoned that very quickly, and then I um, I reached out, and I just it was just a matter of I got this great program, and I made it about me and not the program. I've got this great program. I can get you results in, in like this much time and, and lay out the numbers for it. 15 minutes, once a week, you don't have to sweat. You don't have to change your clothes. And that was my party line. And I just rattled it off. And what I was trying to create was a uh, discussion and an argument. You know, it, it, I wanted to upset people. I work out six days a week, every day. There's no way possible. That was perfect. Well, come in and give me the opportunity. Give me 15 minutes. You don't have to change. You can be right in the middle of your work day. And I'm going to push you right out the door. And if, if you think it's wonderful, great. Uh, and if you don't think it is, and I'm full of it, good for you. You know, go, go tell everybody that. I would challenge them. That's important. That's about me. 
That's about me and my business. It's not about high intensity. It's not about Menex equipment. It's not about Nautilus. It's not about Arthur Jones. It's absolutely not about Mike Mentzer and Dorian Yates. It was about me and my workouts. So I'm a trainer and I want to go to the next level. So that would create, uh, I would be able to drag people. It's a free workout. So dragging people in off the street, challenging them and getting that going. Now, you want to increase your market to people that obviously can afford you and are, are people that have uh, a good network. So you're always reaching out to friends and friends and friends of uh, friends of friends and family. Family is wonderful, especially if they're in the workforce and they're doing their thing. They're going to have friends. Of, you know, all of my, my, my son, my brother, my, my cousin, he's doing this really unique workout. It's 15 minutes and watch people's head explode. Uh, that's it. All I need is to get the body in the door. Great. So that was the best marketing that I ever did. And it was, uh, if you want to call it guerrilla marketing, it was really just getting out there and just grabbing people and dragging them in and challenging them and, and upsetting them and, and creating an argument. And then boom, I have to deliver, right? And we talked about this in, in the last interview. I had a, I had a workout, a six exercise routine where if I finished off with the hammer strength deadlift, I could put them on the floor and it was not a problem. I'm not, that's not my goal, guys. I'm not looking to hurt anybody. I'm not looking to make people pass out or throw up, but sometimes you just need to have the ability to do it, okay? Or just to make the room spin a little bit. Yeah, so can we just, just, just park on, park that for a second. I just wanna highlight one thing you said about basically I've heard it, the way I've heard it being described before is friends, fools, and family, right? It's the initial, your first customers are friends, fools, and family. And then um, this gets me thinking about, you know, I, I believe, and tell me what you think about this, Pete, like, you know, if you've got to be an entrepreneur in, in this space and any entrepreneur, you've got to be really tenacious. You've got to get out there. You've got to be selling your business all the time. And um, I just think a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs or, or you know, startups aren't comfortable doing that. You know, they, they don't want to get out and try and invite all their friends and family in for free workouts or their network. And I think that if you feel that way, you might want to reconsider your path. Cause I think that's almost like the most important thing, especially in the beginning to get off the ground in any business is just really being tenacious and really getting out there and asking everyone to come in for a free workout and not being afraid to say when someone says, ah, you know, it's not for me. I work out at the local, whatever. And saying, well, that's understandable. I get that. Um, do you know anyone else who'd be interested? You know, like the amount of times I've done that, not in just in, in high intensity training business, but in other businesses and then got great deals, uh, you know, from a second degree contact is, 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 a, is a lot. So it's, it's always worth doing that. I just wanted to highlight that because I think that I've had conversations recently with people who are like, oh, I, I don't really like doing that. I don't really want to do that. And I'm like, you gotta, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's probably a controversial point because I know there are there are more than one way. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's lots of different lead gen tactics, but I feel like this is one of those ones in the beginning that's pretty pretty important. Well, let, let's let's go over that for a sec. There are a lot of lead gen at, at tactics, but what kind of leads are you getting? You know, and, and you, you look at if you're on Instagram and Facebook and all, you, you're going to see an ad every five minutes about somebody who was actually broken out of work last week and they're making $10,000 this month. I mean, the, the ads are just ridiculous. And if you fall for this stuff, you may get leads, but who are the leads going to be? They're going to be people that can't right. afford you, don't like you, don't know you. They're going to be nut jobs. I mean, I don't want those leads, right? We want good leads. If you were going to be, and we all, yeah, in New York City, you, you only met 10,000 of these people, but you know, the people that, that want to be actors and models, right? If you're the kind of person that, or maybe you have a good look and maybe you have a good delivery, maybe you, maybe you do have some skills, but if you're sitting in your part, apartment waiting to be discovered, not going to happen, Yeah, right? Yeah. You got to go knocking on doors and tell everybody in the world, would you like to hear me recite Shakespeare? Because I'm really good at it. And you may know a producer and, and it's, you're going to do it 10,000 times before you get the one that puts you in the, in the lead role in something or a backup and then boom, you hit. Personal training is no different. If you're shy and you're not, if you don't believe in yourself and your system, you're not going anywhere. I can guarantee you 10 sessions a week for people that feel sorry for you. That's where you're going to be. Yeah. I agree. So, 
it, it's yeah, you got to be vocal. You got to believe. I believed. I, I mean, I drank my own Kool Aid. It was like, this is the way. This is the way. This is the workout program. It's for health and longevity, and that was my thing. That's why I got into this field. Health, and that's really important because I see debates. They go on every day. I follow them and I watch them, especially on YouTube. Um, you know, which which uh, high volume or high intensity for building twenty inch arms, right? That that's not our market. That's it, you're not doing this for. We're, we're trying to get people to live longer a better quality of life uh, and put the just just right amount of work into it not too much not too little uh we're trying to this is our service not one of my clients ever came in and said hey pete i need a 20 inch arm you know to fit in my thousand dollar suit like no no it never happened not once so really identify your market and go out and be vocal about it be such a great point lawrence you know speak yell from the rooftops and I did, you know, yeah, it, it, I was in everybody's face. Try my workout. I don't work out. Not the point. I, I, and you know what? Even better, because if you're somebody that's not into working out and you like my workout, well, then that's the home run or at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. I work out every day. And you know what, Pete, if I'm not working out an hour a day, six or seven days a week, you know, it's not good for my stress level. It's not, you know, they give you all the reasons why they do it every day, right? Maybe to get away from the wife, whatever the excuse is. But, and, and I'd say, well, all the more reason you want one of my workouts in your schedule once a week, and then you can go off and do your own thing five other days if you want, uh, which you want to kind of appease them a little bit just to get them in the door. And then if you do your job well, they can't work out five days later, you know, for five, the next five days, they're crippled, right? You want to make the point. Yeah. So yeah. getting them in the door, it's huge. Don't be quiet about this. Um, and I got them in the door. Uh, this one story I'm going to tell you guys is about a lady who reached out to me and, and it's really great on the internet. <laughs> so, it, wait, it's 19, it's uh, 1997, 98. Okay. How much internet was there back then? Very, very little. People did not schedule with me by email. This was, everything was a landline at the time. For the most part, we did have cell phones. We did have email, but people weren't comfortable using it that much yet. A woman heard about me through a friend of a friend. The woman that told that, that, uh, referred me, I had never met and never worked out with me. One of her friends came in and got her butt kicked in 10 minutes and started telling all these people about it. So picture this, two ladies talking, two good friends talking. And, you know, I got to start getting in shape again. I really let things go, blah, blah, blah. I've been working all these hours. You know, I heard about this guy, Pete, and he knocks this out of the park in 15 minutes once a week. And you don't have to sweat or shake. If you don't recite your own marketing line all the time, a thousand times, other people won't. And I wanted everybody to say the same thing. 15 minutes, once a week, you don't have to sweat or change your clothes. Boom. Right. And that comes back to me. Really? And so did you try it? No, I never met. No, you know, I'm doing my own workout for like this lady had her own routine. Didn't feel like she needed my services. It didn't intrigue her enough to come and see me, but enough to talk about it. That is the win. Guys, I can't I stress that enough. A, a person who was, uh, I didn't never met her, but what I heard about her from her friends and more people that I met was that she was in shape. She was very healthy. Uh, and she had her own routine. She had her own diet. You know, whatever she followed, I really don't know. But it was working for her, yet she would talk about me to her friends who couldn't follow her routine. So now That's I get this. <laughs> Hi, Pete. My name is Ruth. I heard about you from a friend who you don't even know and you never met. Um, can, can I ask a few questions about your workout? Uh, sure. I'm responding by email. Sure. What can I tell you? Now, my, I thought it was a scam. I'm like, you know, she's from Nigeria. And the next thing she's going to ask is for my checking account number, right? It's just, you know, I'm very leery of this. So and I, you don't get, I never got a new client this way. What can I tell you? Is it really only 15 minutes? Well, actually, I allot 15 minutes. It's, it's only nine minutes worth of exercise. 
but I'd give a little room in there just in case you have questions or need a sip of water or then that's my answer. Is do you really is no sweating required? Yes, 100 percent If you're sweating, that actually means you're overheating and that's really not productive to my program. The studio is kept it, and it's not a gym, it's more of a studio, is kept around 65 degrees. You'll be cold when you walk in. And you'll be a normal temperature when you leave. Uh, she had a third question and then booked. Can I, and I, I don't offer, please come in for a free workout and see if this is for you and see if it's, it's for real. Plain and simple. Just come on in and, and shake my hand. Let me look you in the eye. Let me, hi, how are you? Now, when she came in, I treated her like everybody else. Uh, first of all, she was a real person and I was thrilled about that. Um, you know, somebody says that the, her name is Ruth. You kind of half expect a, a five foot eleven overweight gentleman to walk in, and you know this internet people, like not everybody's representing themselves well, right? So, uh, but a, a nice lady walked in, uh, obviously successful in whatever she was doing, uh, you know, uh, career wise. Um, and you can just tell what the way people carry themselves. Um, a little bit shy and timid of, you know, she, she just reached out on the internet to somebody, an email, a stranger, uh, but her friend is somebody she respects. And, uh, and that's how we got in the door. So she comes in the door. Um, I am no nonsense. I don't want to sit down and be your best friend and hold your hand. Please tell me, tell me your life and your problems and your, you know, that's, that's not training to me. You know, that's therapy. Um, I'm so happy you came in. Thank you so much for taking this. Let me just ask you two or three quick questions and, and we're going to just do this. Okay. Now that even makes them more nervous, which is not my intention, but it, it's, it's, let's get to the machine as fast as possible. Okay. Once you start an exercise, everybody kind of calms down because now they're focusing on hearing your voice and your instruction. And that impresses the heck out of people. It's really good. So don't, you know, hey, we go slow for a reason. We do it infrequent for a reason. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear the science. Nobody wants to hear the study that was just done last week, last month, or 20 years ago. Nobody. They don't, don't mention Arthur Jones. They don't know who he is. God bless him. I love him. I own him, right? They don't know. They don't care, right? Just, you know, and absolutely don't mention a bodybuilder who, you know, did not uh, subscribe to health and longevity. So it just, just, you know, just shut up and get to your machine. You know, a couple of questions. Are you working out currently? No, I haven't done a thing. Okay. So I know I got a blank sheet of paper here. Um, have you ever lifted weights or done some strength training? Well, you know, at the, at, the, at the very common gym in New York City, I had a membership for a year, but I'd walk on the treadmill and I did, they had a circuit and it was always the lightest thing. I said, you know, just out of curiosity on that circuit, would you do like three sets of 12 on everything? Yeah, pretty much. I said, you know, I, I'm familiar with that program too. And I always used to ask myself that question, why three sets and why 12 reps? Why not four sets and 13 reps? And, and those questions kind of led me to really look into this deeper and find out what was necessary and what wasn't. Come on, let's do the first exercise. That was my pitch. That was my history. You know, just, and, and it was a way to connect and, you know, a way to identify. And now we're on a, a low back machine. And at the okay. time, it was a Nautilus low back machine. Uh, beautifully reconditioned very smooth action. And that's what we did. So we got on the machine. Listen, I'm going to talk you through this set. You know how you, you just move, you know, boom, 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 boom. You do your reps. Listen to my instruction. Take a deep breath, fold your arms across your chest, put your back on the back pad, close your eyes if you want, and just listen to me. There is 80 pounds on this machine. And I want you to apply 79 pounds of pressure which means it's not going to move, right? 79 against 80 pounds is not going to move. Now, load up on it a little bit and put 80 pounds of pressure on. What happens there? It still doesn't move. 80 against 80, it hasn't moved yet. Now give me 81 pounds of pressure. 
and boom, we have movement. Great. Keep that pace. And my voice doesn't get louder. It gets softer. And I'm, I'm right by there here, right? The machine is really well positioned. So their head, head level and my head level are the same versus if you want to pick, um, you know, if you're really dumb and want to lose all your clients, pick a sit up exercise, do it on the floor and stand over them, right? The body language and the, you know, you, you really want to show respect. You want to be mindful of your body language and theirs and the position and low back was a great exercise. Everybody in the world's got a low back issue. Everybody. So let's address that first. I take her through that and it's a nice, can you feel the muscles working for once? You know, if you're moving too quickly, you miss it. It's like picking up a book, they're flipping the pages. You didn't read a word, right? That's, that's how exercise works. That's how I, I want you to feel this. I take her through three reps in 90 seconds, set the weight down. How did that feel? Ooh, that felt great. Let's try another exercise. Now we're on the leg press. This one, I'm going to dial up a little bit. Anyway, I take her through the six exercises and this is my client. Remember, I told you guys a story about a guy that came in who worked out six days a week and he was lean and mean and thought his wife was having an affair and uh, I had to put him in the ground. So his workout was very, very different. It was Arthur Jones. It was Arthur training Casey Vieira. It was start to push. When you get to failure, you can't do another rep. I'm dragging you to the next machine. It's high intensity in its purest form. Okay. And, and grab them by the back of the neck. Now you're on this machine. Get in there. No red. But I need a sip of water. No, you don't. Sit. Push. Go. It was always slow and controlled, but it was, you know, we're pushing to failure, right? Boom, 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 boom. I think I gave him four or five exercises. I ended off with the hammer strength deadlift and he's on, I think I'm going to pass out and boom, he's on the floor. This lady, this is the opposite. She's afraid of exercise. She's afraid of weight. She's afraid of machines. So my voice is going to be different. It's not going to be aggressive. It's going to be softer. It's going to be uh, very coaching, you know, very supportive. This is going to be fine. You're going to really enjoy this and get something out of it. She did. She signed up immediately. Lovely lady uh, coming in once a week. And she used to even ask me, can I come in twice a week? And I wasn't heading in that direction. So this woman was, it turned out she was a great source of referrals and started to tell people about her workout, even though she wasn't making progress yet. She was just enjoying the routine and the whole methodology and my coaching. So she started doing this. Now, out of all the clients I had, and I was doing, I was doing uh, close to 60 sessions a week at the time. So I had a decent amount of clients, obviously, right? I had over 50 clients. I did still have some twice a week people. So out of all these people, how many of them referred to me? Very, very, very few. You rarely get a good referral person. So when you find one, do something about it. And I did. And after she sent me three or four people, uh, I pulled her aside and I said, hey, listen, I came up with this new referral program and I'd like you to take advantage of it. Here's the deal. For every successful referral you give me, which means they have to sign up and write me a check, I'm going to add four free sessions to your account, which is basically a month, a month of training. It expires in six weeks. So if you take your four sessions and you don't use them for six weeks, you'll lose them. And that goes for your paid sessions as well. There has to be rules in place for anything, for your session packages. Even oh, I, I see. So, so just to clarify, when you said earlier about you wanted 100 people training once a week, the referral program increased their frequency temporarily to like twice a week. Is that, are you, were you creating buffer for that? I'm just trying to understand that. No. Oh, no, no, no sorry. So they wouldn't pay for an entire, they wouldn't pay for an entire month is basically it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But sorry, could you just, I, I'm uh, sorry to inter interject because I know you're on a roll, but um, can you just describe again the strategy, the reason why you were focused on 100 clients, a hundred, uh, ses one session a week rather than like 50 clients, two sessions a week? Why were you focused on that again? 50, uh, 50 clients at two sessions a week means if, if, uh, if two or three or five people quit or took a vacation, you would actually see an income drop that mm -hmm. week or that month. And you'd be fighting to kind of, you, you know, you get used to your income real quick. You know, if, if you make it, you spend it, right? I didn't want that. And the, if you had people training twice or three times a week, there was more potential for an income hit 
if somebody quit. Imagine if you had a, a five time a week client and they quit. Well, that's 20 sessions a, a month that you, you have to now rebuild and they don't oh. rebuild quickly. So once a week, if 10 people quit, I didn't feel a thing. And I figured a hundred sessions because it never been done before. I've never heard of anybody doing it uh, out of everything I read. Now, maybe there were people doing it, but yeah. I, I just yeah. want to see if it can be done. Understood. All right. So uh, referral program, four free sessions for every successful referral. They expire in six weeks. It just gets added onto your account. Okay. This woman did not pay me for over two years. She would come up with a new body every two or three weeks and she paced herself. Okay. So I started offering the program to other, other clients and as expected, it didn't fly with them. Oh yeah, but I don't know anybody. You know what? Not everybody can afford this 70, you know, at that time I'm now shared $75 for 15 minutes. That's a lot of money, but whatever their excuse was, mostly they were just afraid to talk about it. Not, not everybody wants to get into the debate or the argument, but a few do. You want to reward those few. So here was my person. And for two years, she just pumped my, now those people would come in. Here's the way they would come in. Some of them would come in and, and just want the workout. And the others would say, I heard you gave Ruth four free sessions for sending me in. I said, well, kind of, if you sign up, if you sign up, she'll get four free sessions. Can I get that deal? I said, yes, you can. Now, here's another important part. And I make notes on this stuff for you guys. Um, the referral program has to have an expiration date. So at that time, I switched it to, uh, yes, you can. Now, here's the deal. You start working out with me on session number one, the clock starts running. If you don't give me a referral within six weeks, you lose the ability to do it. I look, you can send somebody to me, but I won't give you four free sessions if they sign up. So you got to put a little pressure on because I see. 90% of the people will like, oh, I can get four free sessions if I send a successful referral and they'll never do it because there's no pressure to do it. It's the urgency and the scarcity, isn't it? That's fascinating. <laughs> I've never heard it done like this. And I've always been about expiration dates and cancellation policies. You can't have this forever. I don't want you to have this phenomenal thing, the gift that I gave you, and you don't use it. That, that just doesn't sit with me. So put the expiration. I tightened up the expiration date to 30 days a few years later. And the reason for it now is because now I've got all the, I'm doing over a hundred sessions uh, a week and, and, and I would open it up. So here's what I did. The people that were successful, and there was two or three of them that were successfully using the referral program uh, at that point periodically, right? Because you kind of, you slow down with your referrals. So even if Ruth referred one person every three months to me, she still got the four free sessions. There was no expiration for her. She was a good person. Now, new people would come in and say, I heard about the referral program, right? Very attractive. Yes. When, when we launch it or offer it, I'll let you know. So it wasn't just out there all the time. Okay. Now I always, I always launched the program January, you know, January one. So in December I'd start sending out emails or I would tell people as they came in for their sessions, January 1st, the referral program is going into effect. It's going to be in effect from January 1st to, uh, February 1st, which means if you don't take advantage of it, you'll lose it for the year. I mean, talk about pressure, right? Yeah. But that's the way to do it. And, and, and again, if I needed more clients, I would offer to get in June. January and June are the best two months to really drum up new business, right? It just, just works out that way. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Today's episode is brought to you by Imagine Strength, your one-stop solution for safe, simple, and effective high-intensity training equipment. When it comes to high-intensity training, it's about the right workout machines intelligently designed for your studio. That's the specialty of Imagine Strength, inspired by the legendary Arthur Jones. They've pioneered efficient and affordable fitness equipment, perfectly crafted for your HIT business. With a team that lives and breathes HIT, Imagine Strength combines passion, innovation, and careful design 
into every piece of equipment, creating the perfect environment for an intense yet rewarding workout. So why choose Imagine Strength? Number one, they create innovative, tailor-made equipment for HIT Studios. Number two, they provide cost-efficient designs, making HIT more accessible. And number three, they're committed to continuous innovation and refinement so your studio never falls behind. Elevate your HIT business with a team at Imagine Strength. Visit imaginestrength.com to discuss your needs and select the gear that'll take your business to new heights. Be a part of the HIT revolution with Imagine Strength and see how their equipment can transform your workout experience. So January 1st, I mean, I had been building this up for four weeks in December. When you come back from the holiday, the referral program is going to be, take advantage of it, get the four free sessions, and I'd really sell it. And then boom, I'd be getting a decent amount. Now, if you didn't take advantage of it on February 1st, it wasn't offered to you anymore. You weren't going to get any free sessions if you sent me a referral. So the next time around, whether it be June or next January, when I built it up again, it probably motivated these people more to try it. Yeah, I love this. This idea of open and closed, almost in terms of the referral program. I, I just, I got, you got my mind turning. I'm thinking, how funny would it be to test this for overall client acquisition? We only take clients this part of the year or from these dates. And I know that sounds absurd to people probably, or, you know, using scarcity as well. Like we only have 10 more spots. And obviously you want to be, you have to, adhere to this. You can't break the rules, right? You've got to be honest about it, but it can work incredibly well. And for just those listening who are watching, who really want to learn more about scarcity and urgency, read Alex Hormozzi's book, $100 million Offers. It's amazing. And in there, he's, he talks about, you know, lots of different uh, things that enhance the value of an offer, but the urgency and scarcity bit is very, very good. Um, cause this can be applied in so many ways, but no, I love it, Pete. This is, this is, I've not heard a referral program like this, but you were obviously taking on clients all year round. They would, they just weren't all coming from referral, obviously, but, or they were and in, but you weren't rewarding the, uh, the client necessarily. I wasn't, I was rewarding the, the one or two that I started this program with no matter what, because they were so consistent with their referrals that even if they had a dry spell of two or three months or more, even I didn't do I still rewarded them because they were the core of the program. They got me thinking about it. Got it. The other people who I knew weren't going to be good referrals, I put limitations on them. So that was important. Here's something that you brought up just now that's really important to talk about. You mentioned, uh, you know, I only have 10 spots left. Now, even when I hit 100 sessions and I was hitting, oh, well, in over 100 sessions, it broke $10,000 in a week. That was a big deal for me, right? That was my goal. I wanted to see if a personal trainer can do it. It's not about hit. It's not about volume. It's not, it's about, can I make $10,000 in a week? That's more money than how many professions can you come up with, Lawrence? Yeah. Doctors, lawyers, right? Not a lot are making that kind of money every single week, right? So I wanted to do it. So now I hit that. Imagine if I said, I've only got one spot left. That actually wouldn't work. That would backfire on me, at least in my opinion, because people will say in their head, well, I shouldn't go out of my way because what if my client gets there and he doesn't have a spot left, right? I didn't want yeah. them to make the judgment. So I always left it open and I would never let, never let anybody see my schedule. So even though it was on a clipboard with their workout chart and they would say to me, I would actually flip it up while they're on their last machine. This is also important. I would flip up the, the, uh, the workout charts, look at the schedule, right? Kind of memorize it. So, right. I know what I've got, put it down. I know what they're going to ask for and say, okay, great workout. What do you want for next week? Uh, same time next, got it. And I wouldn't let them see me write it down. I wait till they're walking away. Why didn't I want them to see my schedule? Cause I don't want anybody doing the math, figuring out and calculating how much money I'm making. Because that's a negative. That'll hurt your business. Oh, Pete made $10,000 last week. I'm a lawyer. I didn't make $10,000. I, I made $300,000 a year. He's making $500,000. Like, that'll really start think so. people. Right? Is that a New York thing? Because I thought it was more like people would be like, hell yeah, Pete, good for you. You're delivering massive value. You deserve every penny. Stop. No, this, that's a worldwide thing. Because now you're really? going to start aggravating people, I think. Okay. 
Interesting. All right. You don't so, want to put it in the face. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, interesting. So just with regards to this referral program, I think you described it quite well. I think you gave enough details on it where listeners and viewers can get a good idea on how to implement that, I think. But is there anything else to it? Like uh, any any other details about it that are important for the listeners to to make sure they implement it successfully? Giving them the tools to talk about you and give you a referral. People can't figure it out on their own. You have to have your own marketing line, right? And for me, it was 15 minutes once a week. You don't sweat. You don't change your clothes. You'll hear me say that in every interview. You'll hear me say it exactly that way. That was my line. Come up with your line or use my line either way. But I would drill that into people. So subconsciously, if they, if you know, Hey, how you doing? How have you been? Oh, I'm working out with this guy. Me too. Uh, 15 minutes once a week. I don't sweat. I don't change my clothes. Like subconsciously, they thought they thought of it. You know, they thought they figured it out. And I was feeding them that line. And that was it. You know, I needed to create that. That's important. If you, a lot of people, even successful people, doctors, lawyers, school teachers, like, you know, or a school teacher gets up in front of a classroom of 30 kids. Yet when they're in a social setting, they may like a deer on the headlights, they may freeze up and, and they can't speak about their workout. It's a sensitive topic. So you really want to feed them the information. And then this is also was important for me. Um, the next question that they were going to get after 15 minutes, I don't sweat, I don't change my clothes, right? Uh, once a week uh, was, well, how does that work? Okay. Definitely don't want your client talking about the cam and <laughs> the cadence and right. Like, no, you want them to turn around and say, you got to go see him yeah. and not offer anything and tell them that yeah. it's working for me. I'm telling you, let's see if you could survive it. You know, I just challenge you. I love, I love the one-liner, right? The message that you taught your clients to preach or say, how did you come up with that? Because it's, it's funny because um, there's a popular author, Donald Miller, who wrote Story Brand and Marketing Made Simple, where he teaches a concept of creating a one-liner and like the, a formula for it. And it's, it's, it's very good. And um, we've used it for, for our own uh, one-liners for high-intensity business, but also for the studio here in, in Galway, Optima Strength. And I'm curious, I'm assuming you never read these books because they're quite new. And so well, what did you read? Well, this is a good question. Firstly, what were the, how did you learn this stuff? Like, how did you learn to do that, for instance? And um, how can the listeners figure out their one-liner in your view? All my failures. I mean, remember I started my first, my first paid session was in 1985. Uh, and I was telling a friend this yesterday. I said, do you remember when I retired in 2016? I said, I had put 31 years into it. The yeah. first 10 years, Lawrence, I was beyond poor. I mean, poor people were richer than I was. It was just, I was, I was terrible. I was failing. And I would listen to myself, you know. Um, in the very beginning, uh, one of the things was I was a 250-pound bodybuilder. And no matter how I dressed or tried to hide it, you know, that was a negative And I it turned people off. And then when I started to pick up clients and do better and slim down and, and switch to high intensity and stuff like that, I would listen to my, my line. And you could see uh, in somebody's yeah. body language or their expression. Like if you, if you pitch something like, um, all right, so we're going to do this high intensity Mike Menser workout that's going to be really awesome. And you see there, there you, know, so <laughs> you know, make a little, right? Especially your client, because... What I love about your clients in your career is they're so direct, right? Because a lot of them are like New York lawyers, like no time for nonsense. Like that woman you described, who's like, if you if you make me so muscular, this suit doesn't fit, you're fired. I bet you that was really rapid learning because you would get brutally honest feedback on a regular basis. Oh, Pete, shut up. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. Like, whereas I think uh, it certainly would be our experience where I don't think some of our clients, for instance, have been that honest because they don't want to hurt someone's feelings or something like that. And sometimes it's quite difficult to get that type of feedback. When that, and it's obviously it's, it can be painful, right, to hear that, but it's the most useful feedback. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. I think that's really served you. 
But please, well, please go good, on. That's another good point. My my line for that uh, from that lady, where, you know, if you, if you make me bigger and I don't fit my eight hundred dollars suit, you're fired, and you're not going to work in this town again. Well, yeah. okay, so that's upsetting. Keep in mind that I've been a personal trainer for over uh, probably uh, five, six, seven, uh, maybe even ten years at that point, not doing well. Okay, so that line stuck with me. What did I do with it? It took me a few years to figure it out. But my line, my response was, my workouts will make you smaller, tighter, healthier, stronger. Those are my four things. So, I, 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 you know, they may all say the same thing, kind of, right? It wasn't, it was just, and not bigger, right? Because as I started meeting the new clients, you know, and if one came like, you know, if I picked up a referral once a year at that point back then, in the, in the early nineties, really struggling and so grateful for the new client that you have diarrhea of the mouth and you start explaining your, your workout methods and your, you know, your life. And next thing you know, you're, you can hear yourself saying, just shut up. Like, you know, you're telling them too much, right? But you're so excited for the one referral this year that you couldn't shut up. It, that's, that's how I learned to tighten it all up. When I finally realized don't tell them anything, shut up, show them. And, and here's what they want. They want smaller, tighter, stronger, healthier. They don't want bigger, dumber, you know, they don't want steroids. They don't want, it's, they, they want strength and health. Yeah. Just you, tighten you know, it up. What I'm hearing from you is it a, lot, a lot of it is self-reflection, right? This is very much, I think applies to all entrepreneurs. It's like you, you've got to get the reps in. Right, you can't shortcut all this stuff. You've got to have the little failures. You've got to, you got to sit thousand sales appointments. You've got to go through that in order to develop that character, and then self reflect and refine every single time. And like you say, if you're looking at the body language of the person in front of you, it's going to help refine what you're saying. So I think that's great. That's it's, that's that's fair to say, P. I think that's great uh, uh, wisdom for the listeners to to think about in terms of maybe it's just what they need more practice. But also, um, if, if listeners are interested in just getting like a first draft on the one-liner, read Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller because it will really help with that. Uh, but I do think that even when you do that, you will not really get kind of nail it until you've had those reps as well, right? Which will help refine it over time. Right. It's absolutely right. true. Yeah. You need to have, and it, it has to come out of you like, like you're not even thinking about it. It just rolls out all the time. Right. And you start to see what really resonates with people. And then you boil it down, make it really simple. I love yours. I think yours is, you can tell you said it like a million times. So the way it rolls on your tongue. To get a hundred clients, I had to say it a hundred thousand times minimum, right? Over time. And, and keep in mind, guys, I, you know, what I'm telling you right now in, in a few minutes or even in, in 30 minutes, uh, yeah. my, 10 years of failures to get, you know, to turn this around and figure it out. Uh, it's like I told you, I asked you that one time, Lawrence, like if I told you your podcast was going to fail for the next two, could you hang in there and keep pitching it? It's a long time. So I'm really trying to save you guys a lot of time, you know, get you to the front of the line quicker. Yeah, we very much appreciate that. So um, just a, another question I had on the, uh, the ratio. So you mentioned that. Some people would become great referrers, right? That lady you mentioned. Um, would it be kind of like, would, would you notice like an 80-20 thing kind of happening, like 20% generating like 80% of referrals? Would it be a spread like that? Can you elaborate on what to expect? Yeah. Well, 99-1. Right, got it. I, I thought you might say something like that, yeah. It's that tight. As a matter yeah. of fact, a good friend of mine who worked with me, who I trained, he was a massage therapist and he said, I want to learn this and I want to do this with you. Uh, and became very successful. He does 60 sessions a week. And we were talking last night and, I, and he's, he got his one. And I, it's a 90-year-old uh, a woman who lives in his town who's in great shape, loves his strength training. He does, he's got uh, nine pieces of Menex equipment that he converted his detached garage, put carpeting in. You know, he's, he made it like our studio was in New York City. Nice. And uh, he copied it to the letter. And um, he said, she's, he quote, She's like the mayor of our town. You know, people are always walking. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm doing this new workout with my friend, Mike. You know, and, and that's it. Boom. Like she didn't even say, how are you? Right. She pitched him. 
you're only going to find one of those out of a hundred people. Okay. Okay. And so uh, something I, place for them. Yeah. You know, it's uh, just before this call, P, I was talking to a, a colleague of ours, highly successful, who really was pushing the, um, not pushing, I should say, but explain to me that the vast majority of their referrals are organic. Right. They're not happening because their trainers are being proactive. They're not necessarily happening because of referral programs are happening because of great service um, and a real focus on the elements of the workout experience that matter um, and the overall service experience. So I'm guessing, don't let me put words in your mouth, but I'm guessing you were also seeing referrals organically the whole time too. So across the year, you'd have this referral program going, you'd have, you know, new uh, prospects coming in from that program, but then you'd also have your organic word of mouth, just clients just hearing about you uh, from friends, from, you know, former clients maybe, and then building the business that way. Is that, is that accurate? It was, but it was a small amount. It really okay. was a small amount. And I, even as I progressed and got famous, so to speak, right. And books are out and stuff like that. It was actually, I think even the books slowed it down a bit um, because it, it comes back to don't tell somebody um, that you only have 10 spots left because it really shuts them down. So when a book comes out and they see me on, you know, the uh, Oprah's magazine or the front page of the New York Times, it shuts them down. Oh, well, I can't refer to him now because he's probably raised his rate. Like they'll come up with their excuses just like they came up with their excuses not to work out or eat right. See, the weird thing is I thought, I thought it'd be the total opposite. I thought the social proof of that would be like this. Oh, hey, John, that's my trainer, Pete. Yeah, he's on the, he's on the, he's on the Oprah, in the Oprah magazine. That's how I thought, what I thought would happen. The, act, the exact opposite. And I, <laughs> okay. I, I couldn't tell you how difficult it was to try to, you know, for the publisher, they pay me all this money, right? right. So I got to sell books for them. So I'm doing interviews like nonstop. I had to try to separate my interviews and my, almost like my methodology a little bit and my marketing from my clients. And I had to really keep them because my, my clients almost starting to shut down. Oh, well, you know what? He's going to get famous now and he's not even going to train us anymore. I see. They thought that you neglect it. And I guess you were putting less focus on your, your training business. Cause it, I mean, just from personal experience, it's very hard to do two things or more than one thing. Um, oh, the training came first. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, yeah. I focused on the train. That was, that was it. That that's what made me nothing else happens without the training. Yeah. So it's tough. It's, it's, and, and, and you know, I, I love being able to share this in that people would all, well, you know, he wrote a book and, and I, he got lucky and he got a publishing contract and blah, blah, blah. That's how he got all his clients. No, that was the opposite. First of all, I was, I was a, a millionaire trainer before the book. And I was breaking the hundred sessions before the book. That's what prompted the book deal to come up. Somebody heard about it. Um, and the book was actually a negative. Uh, people don't, you know, you don't call, if you pick up a book, you don't actually call the author, right? Yeah. You know, did you pick up a, a, a Mike Mentor high intensity book and automatically think years ago, I got to call Mike and train with him. Nobody thought that, right? You read the book. You yeah. got the intermission for 20 bucks instead of $200. I would say, I hear what you're saying. I think it's slightly different now in the internet age, if you want to call it that, because now a lot of people write books for the authority and for the lead generation aspect to it. So there'll usually be some kind of call to action in the book. Oh, hey, get all these additional free resources by going to giving your email address here, go to this website. Um, because obviously it builds a lot of authority, but then maybe that's more like you're saying, it's more believable because these people are not necessarily enter into like a one-on-one -on -one coaching or service arrangement with the author. They're entering into some kind of paid community or some kind of service or product or service. Right. Whereas like back in the day, it would have just been, I don't know, Mike Mensa doing, you know, high level coaching and right. uh, t teaching people how to like optimize their program and stuff like that which maybe felt inaccessible for the average person who just picked up his book back in the day. I'm assuming. Oh, well, you, you assume correctly. And if there is a, an interview that Mike Mentor did, uh, I always follow his interviews and love, love hearing, you know, cause he really is kind of a ground zero before he took the wrong turn with it. But, um, he mentioned that when he needed money and he thought he would become a personal trainer with his hit methods, 
uh, that he would just put his shingle out and he would be flooded with clients. And he said, that wasn't the case at all. You know, he had already been a successful author. Uh, he had a Mr. Olympia competitor. You know, everybody knew he, what he could do on the, on the bodybuilding stage. And he couldn't scare up clients. It took a little while before he, he really got any traction and, and, and anybody to come in and work with him. And I think it was probably up until he, he trained Dorian, which may have been 10 years into his career before things started, uh, you know, other bodybuilders started booking him. Okay. So a similar road. I mean, he was making a lot of mistakes and couldn't build his business up. Interesting. I never knew that. Um, and for anyone who's interested, by the way, uh, John Lill has done a great job with Heavy Duty College, which is a YouTube channel all about Mike Mensa. And he's been uploading lots of rare, uh, exclusive content, com audio conversations and various videos that I don't think have ever been seen before. Um, and I'm really chuffed with John because that YouTube channel's taken off. So it's Heavy Duty College. Go and check that out as well. Um, Pete, this has been awesome as always. Uh, a little glitch in the middle, which we need to smooth over with a nice edit, but uh, hopefully that won't be too noticeable. <laughs> um, and uh, any other thoughts from you before we wrap up? Uh, you know what? I, I definitely have more things that we can go over. It, uh, what I, uh, final takeaway that I'd like to share is that you have to invest in your business. So the referral program, people are saying, well, get your, you gave away four free sessions. That was, you know, basically like $300, right? Uh, yeah. But imagine, look at any successful business and they advertise, all right? Mm -hmm. What do you think an ad costs? Go take out a, a half a page in a magazine and see what the rate is. When you see the 10, 12, 15, $18,000 for a magazine ad or, you know, paying for advertising on Facebook even. There are a lot of dollars to reach a lot of people. And out of the millions of people you're going to try to reach, you're going to get one one hundredth of one percent response. And out of that, you're going to get 10 percent that might sign up. I mean, it's a minuscule number for the money. So for me, I thought, well, it's my time. It's not actual dollars, but you have to invest in your business. You have to be willing to invest in your business to get anything back. Yeah. Yeah, great, great point to wrap with. Pete, thank you again so much for your time. I really appreciate it. We'll stay in touch and see uh, if we can schedule some more. Um, and for the listeners, to find out more about Pete and connect with him, you can go to Facebook, Pete Serqua, C-E-R-Q-U-A is the last name, and also Instagram as well. And if everyone listening or watching, uh, please subscribe when your favorite podcast app. It takes less than 10 seconds. It really helps podcasts grow and help more people learn about HIT and how to build a HIT business. And remember to grab your free PDF guide on how to turn your hit business into a robust referral machine, courtesy of uh, Luke Carlson. You can download that now over at highintensitybusiness.com forward slash ref. You'll also get a full length video training with Luke on how to build a referral machine. It really is, you can't get access to this anywhere else. Um, and also you get access to lots of free resources, including hit business guides, checklists, and so much more. Go to highintensitybusiness.com forward slash ref. And lastly, to get the show notes for this episode, please go to highintensitybusiness.com and search for episode 421. And until next time, thank you very much for listening. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This episode is brought to you by Imagine Strength, your go-to for safe, simple, and effective high-intensity training equipment. Growing a successful high-intensity training business requires workout equipment that's not only high quality, but also intelligently designed to fit the unique needs of your studio. And that's where Imagine Strength comes in. Drawing on the wisdom of the legendary Arthur Jones, Imagine Strength has crafted a groundbreaking line of fitness equipment that's as affordable as it is efficient, giving your studio the upgrade it needs without breaking the bank. The team at Imagine Strength breathes hit. Their passion for high intensity training shines through in their designs, which they've consistently refined and innovated for optimum effectiveness and user experience. From my personal experience at REC, I can attest to the careful consideration and craftsmanship that goes into every single piece. My Imagine Strength workout was absolutely brutal, in a good way, of course. Now, what makes Imagine Strength truly stand out? They have innovative equipment tailored for the unique needs of hit studios, affordable and efficient designs, lowering the barriers to entry for a hit business, continuous innovation and refinement, ensuring your studio stays ahead of the curve. Founder Jeff Turner and his team are dedicated to moving the hit industry forward and making strength training accessible to more people than ever before. Here's how you get started. Number one, visit imaginestrength.com. Number two, discuss your specific needs with the team. 
And number three, select the equipment that will propel your business to the next level. Head to imaginestrength.com today and give your hit business the Imagine Strength Edge. Be part of the hit revolution and see firsthand how their unique equipment can transform your studio's workout experience. Elevate your hit business with Imagine Strength. Let's go, let's go.